All right, I want to talk to you about setting up the UF8. I've got two of them, so it takes a little bit of tinkering to understand how to make the most of the unit. Most people use this by utilizing layer one for one DAW, layer two for, let's say, Ableton Pro Tools or what have you, and then three for another DAW. I am pulling all the stops. We're gonna get all the guns out here and we're going to change every layer to control Logic Pro. Now this isn't enough to fully pull this off. If you read this section here, I'm gonna click on the small eye icon. It says to configure your UFA controller, if you wanna control layer two here, you're gonna to have to do something. Just new install Mackie control and then add. And then of course you're gonna to wanna to set the out port to port number five. That's in and out. And then if you're going to have a secondary controller, then you set this one to six. That would be to control layer two. And then if you wanted to control layer three, you would do the same thing, except you would be connecting to port nine. So we're gonna do all of that right now. It's gonna look something like this. So I'm gonna go into that window and I already have this set up on layer one. So this can give you kind of a sneak peek. I'm gonna go into controller surfaces. And so here I have layer one ready to rock. But again, we need more than that. So we're going to add a second Mackie controller. We're gonna add this one. And we're also gonna add the extender as well. Okay, so I've got both of those lined up. So we're gonna click here and let's hook this up to port five. That one to port six. Be sure to set not only the input, but the output as well. Now the most important part is that if you have a second unit, the fader bank offset should read eight so that it's not mirroring each other. You have eight unique faders here and eight unique faders here. So let's see if this is working. Let's go into layer number two and you can see that it is reading the unit. If it didn't, you would hit layer two and everything would just kind of go numb, go dull. But yeah, everything's working the way it needs to. Let's do that one last time. So let me go ahead and add the controller. We'll say yes. We'll add the extender. Now the worst part about this, I'm just gonna give you a heads up, is that every once in a while, the C list or the control surface list messes up and it is a disaster because you have to do this all over again. If you're smart, you try and save everything in advance, but I'm just letting you know that it may happen to you, so don't say I didn't warn you. All right, so I have all three layers set up. Let's go ahead and test out the waters. So this is how I set up my UF8. I really thought long and hard about this, like how can I get the most out of this unit? And I'm thinking about this in an entirely different way. To me, instead of thinking about it like there's three layers, I'm thinking there's like five layers, one, two, three, four, five, and then you have the one that's fixed in pan. So every single bank has some kind of theme. For example, bank number one has to do with navigation. Bank number two has to do with creation, audio creation, music creation. Three, all things editing number four, organization, and the mixer, and then finally, automation and export on number five. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of how this really helps me out. So let's say I start up a session, I am on layer number one, and this first bank has to do with all things navigation, menu diving. So let's say we wanna set up our session, maybe we make a couple of adjustments inside of the preferences, uh, we can set up low latency or something like that. Go into the project settings and, you know, make some choices here. Maybe there's a couple things in the LCD preferences. 
that my talent would like to look at while they're working, uh, change up anything within preferences, change up anything within the toolbar, track header preferences. I don't know, maybe there's something that I want to adjust in terms of key commands. I can close that window by clicking that quick key. That's assigned to command W, which is something we do all of the time. Plugin manager is here. If I want to save my project, I can do so there. Again, closing windows with this specific key. I believe this is assigned to escape. Smart tempo settings, so if I want to switch quickly to adapt mode, which is something I do all the time, you can see how easy this is. Everything that I need in terms of a menu is here. If I save and want to cancel, I can do that. If I save and type something in, I can hit return here, but I can also default here, and now my hands are back on the UF8. So this is kind of the main idea. I want to move quickly, I want to move efficiently, Bank number two has to do with creation. Now you're gonna like this because remember, this is bank number two, but I have three layers of this. So I decided layer one's gonna be audio, layer two will be software instrument MIDI, and then layer three will be the pattern region. So I can move really quickly depending if I'm writing audio, software instrument, or pattern. You gotta love that, that's pretty sweet. Now something I just noticed is that these two units are emulating each other on the third layer and I think I know why. So in the very beginning I didn't set up the last extender so that it reads 8 here. So that's that was by mistake there. So now when I go to bank number 3 yeah everything is good. Alright so let's close that. I'll hit that and let's say I was going to record audio now. So again bank 2 has to do with creation and I've got audio, software, instrument, track, pattern and if I was going to record, there's things that we always do, right? An assembly line of sorts that always takes place. We create an audio track, we input monitor, we record arm, we set up that click, make sure that everything is working the way that it needs to. All right, I'll also turn on the count in. So these are things, again, that we're always doing. So once you're ready to record, you could either go back up here or something that I love to do is I will click and hold that button there, changes this bottom feature to a kind of transport controller so i'll hit record okay and let's pretend that i'm recording something here once you're all done you can hit stop i also have a foot controller underneath me again if you wanted to repeat that you can just continue recording from that same spot let's say you messed up right i don't have to get out of the workflow i can just hit record repeat and then basically I'm going to record that take once again. So this is what I'm talking about. This is why to me the unit is completely worth it. Let's say my gain staging is off. Um, I know there's nothing on here now, but just kind of bear with me. If, if I wanted to bring up the gain, I could simply click on this and you can see that the gain is going up in the region inspector. And so this is happening by means of another third party plugin if you don't know it it's called gain control by speaker food it's a great little program check them out support the cause and so i can control all things fades from here if i wanted to let's say i wanted to get some fading going from the right side i can do that here right if i wanted to fade from the left portion of the region that's great we want to remove those fades boom one touch of a button so in this regard this thing is next level and I don't think anybody can touch it. I'm gonna go to, again, creation phase, but software instrument. So let's go down here. I will navigate by clicking on that button. This moves the playhead over there. And we will create a MIDI region like so. Let's say we actually recorded something of substance. Right, okay, and then after that, you would quantize, and this is normally set to 16th notes, but if you wanted to change the quantization value, you can do that here. So this is a key command called something like set quantization to next value. If I wanted to record MIDI CC, I could do that here. If I wanted to duplicate this track and let's say create harmonies, we can do that there. I don't know, maybe I'm not digging the MIDI format, so I switch over to the pattern format. This is what I'm talking about. This is where this unit elevates 
and, and it does so much and I love it. So if I go to bank number four within layer one, I use this specific category for labeling. So let's pretend that we're starting to kind of get organized. I could click on that macro and this is something you could definitely do with a much less expensive controller, by the way. You could get like a stream deck or something and, and set it all up, but this is just another perk. Having everything in house like this, it's definitely nice. Let's say we were gonna dive deep into automation. I use layer number five for that. And so if we're going to automate, I have A set up there. And then let's say I wanted to select the pointer tool. I can go ahead and change that, start making any automation markings, right? And then let's say we wanted to uh, curve, we can curve just like that. And maybe if we're done with automation curve, we wanted to bring up the value of this specific automation node up. Check this out. Just by clicking here, we are lifting up that value. You can also accomplish that by hitting option down arrow key or up arrow key. So that's a nice workflow as well. So lots of good things here. You can kind of see what I'm getting at. This is going to be unique to your workflow. Yeah, maybe we can share ideas. So if there's anything out there that you have to share, man, I would certainly love to hear about it. I don't think that my system is perfect by any means, but it's definitely, it's it's getting there and I'm definitely appreciating it. Um, and if you didn't know about this unit, there, there are some interesting things that I really like. Let me just uh, give you a quick example. So one thing I do really like Let's say you just wanted to quickly throw on an EQ. So I'm on track number two here. I can click on EQ and that's going to instantiate an EQ on that first slot. So that's pretty slick. The fact that you can just get in there right away within this editing window. I love that, really nice. Again, I use quick key number one to hide and then quick key number two to close windows. Let's pull that EQ back up. This time I'll try and do it in a different way. Let me click on plugin and I will click on slot number one by hitting that button right there. And I'm gonna go into what's called focus view. Now this is really interesting because if I just hover my mouse over any particular part of the GUI, it's going to control certain parameters. So here I'll touch on frequency and you can see that the EQ node is moving. Here I'll focus on gain. So this could be lots of fun right here, right? Can you imagine automating like some white noise and just kind of going back and forth like this? Uh, you can certainly control the high cut or the high shelf in the same manner. Again, lots of fun to be had. Uh, that is a beautiful feature. Basically replaces, if any of you own the knob or NOB, uh, kind of replaces that whole thing all together in some ways. The last thing that I'll mention before we take it home here, we can control Logic Pro on all three of these layers. Please save the control surface list file because if something does go wacky, you can always get that original file. This is how I like to do it myself. I create a backup folder and then inside of this backup folder, I have just things that I wanna save uh, continuously preference list file and then the control surface list file is right up here. Now the last thing worth mentioning is that if there ever came a time where you wanted to control all of the features inside of the UC1 within this unit, you simply have to go into the 360 software and then change the layer, not to a DEW, but to the plugin mixer. And then now you can control this whole ecosystem in a much more diverse and calculated way. All right, team, well, I hope you enjoyed this video about the ultimate logic controller. That's what I like to call it. I think this thing is really, really neat. And I'm really hoping that it just gets uh, cleaner and cleaner in terms of the workflow. I'm hoping it just becomes an extension of your hands, of you know your musical mind. All right. Eddie Gray signing off. Stay up, stay happy, stay focused on what you want. God bless you guys. Let's go.